Welcome back. So he was a child star on shows and movies like Stand By Me and Star Trek The Next Generation. But Will Wheaton says acting was never his dream. In his new book, Still Just a Geek, Will shares with readers the truth about what it was like growing up in Hollywood. I have a new memoir out. It is an updated, annotated version of my 2004 memoir, Just a Geek. Um, until we can come up with a better title for it, it's called Still Just a Geek. Um, and, uh, and this book happened when uh, my editor asked me if I would take a look at a memoir I wrote when I was turning 30, um, uh, that now that I am turning 50, would I look back on how I have changed, how the world has changed, how technology has changed, and uh, just kind of revisit that young man and recontextualize his story. That is the first half of the book. And then the second half of the book is a collection of notable speeches and essays and talks that I have given about topics like my mental illness, being a survivor of child abuse and exploitation, my experiences working on the Big Bang Theory and Star Trek, and being a husband and stepfather. It's a mostly complete memoir, the primary focus of which is nearly 50-year-old me looking back at nearly 30-year-old me who was looking back at nearly 20-year-old me. Oh, I like this. It's very, very meta. But I have to say, thank you so much for sharing your honesty and truth about mental health because oh, we you. don't talk about it enough. And I'm glad that you are sharing it uh, and using your voice to do such. But I have to ask, what does the word geek mean to you? <laughs> um, you know, it's just another, it's a synonym for nerd. When I was a kid, when we were called nerds and we were called geeks and we were called these things that today I really embrace and celebrate, it was pejorative, it was cruel. Yeah. It said, you're weird. You're, uh, it was often used to describe those of us that are neurodivergent. Uh, we didn't have a lot of conversations in the 70s and 80s about what that meant. I have sort of concluded over the course of my life that being a nerd, being a geek, it's not about the thing that you love, right? It's for the longest time someone would say, oh, you like Star Trek, you're a nerd. You like board games, you're a nerd. Um, but I have news for you. Being a nerd is not about the thing you love. It's about the way you love the thing. So there's a person, right? There's this person who's like, I personally do not like football. It's quantum entangled with toxic masculinity in my life, but I understand that it is super popular and I love and I have and I love the enthusiasm with which other people really love it, right? Can you tell me what the meaningful difference is between someone who dresses up in all of their like Seattle Seahawks gear and like mm -hmm. goes to the game? What's the difference between that person and the person who gets all decked out in their Star Wars or Star Trek or Lord of the Rings or Supernatural cosplay and goes to a con? There's no difference. We're just being enthusiastic and loving it and celebrating it together. A nerd is a person who is super enthusiastic about a thing and cannot wait to share that enthusiasm with someone else who is also enthusiastic about it <laughs> okay couple of things first miriam webster needs to call you and get your definition of geek written down Second, <laughs> my point exactly i've been calling my husband a sports nerd forever yeah. because of the level of excitement in there overall when you look at this is there something that sticks out to you what have you learned since then that is something you really needed to share I needed to learn that the abuse I experienced as a child was not my fault. Mm -hmm. Needed to learn and accept that the man who was my father very clearly made a choice when I was young that he just did not love me and that nothing I was ever going to do was going to be good enough for me. Yep. I had to learn and admit that I didn't want to be an actor. That was my mom's dream and she made me do it. I have emotionally immature parents. I have narcissistic parents. I had to learn that a lot of the things that, that caused me unbelievable pain and sadness that contributed directly to my mental illness, that for a long time, I blamed myself for it and treated myself as if I had somehow made a mistake. Yeah. It's, you know, when you live your whole life just trying so hard to just have your dad, like, love you yeah. i started to feel like i'm just never good enough at all for anything and i had to learn that i'm enough i had to learn that it has nothing to do with me his choices have nothing to do with me the choices my mother made for me and the path she put me on was a path i didn't have to stay on and no one has to nobody has to stay on a path once it has stopped being meaningful and fulfilling to them. And that's sort of the central message of this book, right? We don't have to define ourselves by doing a single thing. We don't have to 
allow someone else's expectations for us to define what we're going to do with our entire lives. And that we as parents, I think, if we're going to be loving and supportive and really show up for our children, what what, what we really need to do is empower and support them to be their, their best selves and find their dream and do whatever that they can to realize it. Children are not just extensions of parents that are there to like make the parents look good or look bad. And that was very much how I was treated in, in my life. I wasn't the person, I was a thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I really had to learn in the writing of this new version of, of, of Still Just a Geek, I looked back and, and, and I do this a lot in the annotations. I see where I wasn't honest with myself, yeah. and where I was really struggling and I was living with undiagnosed mental illness. And, and I was trying so hard just to just to feel seen in the world. And I didn't. Um, and and the, the, the real, real, real big takeaway from it for, for all of me, I'm enough. I've always been enough. We yeah. are all enough. Everyone is enough to my fellow survivors and to my fellow scapegoat kids. You're enough. I'm enough. Mm. It's not us. It's them. And I'm so sorry. Such wonderful words. He had so many great things to say. And I'll have more with Will, including his feelings on his surprise return to Star Trek later in the show.